All right. <laughs> anyway, my point is that with today's technology, this is technically feasible. Okay, when that movie was made, well, there was a guy that broke in, he broke out. They didn't have the technology of today. But today well, if you technology. break out and then they catch you again, then that's <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Yeah, then the death penalty or something. <laughs> right? like, well, my point is this, is. that it takes resources, and maybe when Titania is global, <laughs> and people understand the ethics worldwide, maybe there will be a group of people who say, let's create the exile option. Boom, we'll pay for it. We'll get people to subscribe. Hey, you don't want to support people in jail, fine. You don't want to execute people, fine. Subscribe to this service, we'll incarcerate them in a way that you're not having to pay for. You're not going to have doctors and lawyers and hospitals and libraries and television. No, none of that. Primitive conditions. You get some warm clothes, backpack, a knife, some matches. Well, they'd be free to organize and use their skills internally they as well. They can do whatever so, they like. Yeah. They could do whatever they There would certainly they be, like. you know, medical practice practitioners in there, and there would certainly be oh, all kinds of people. walks of life, yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't that be interesting, Mike? It'd be interesting. Yeah. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying it could happen if enough people got together and just thought it was desirable. Okay. Well, the thing about ideas is, you know, I don't give you an idea and then I've lost it. Right. right. We, I give you an idea and then you're free to give it to somebody else. And, and you still have it. it. Yeah. So that's... Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Coming back to this situation, I, I want to stress something that I mentioned last time, but I want to re-emphasize it today because it's really, really important. So here is an octologue. And over here is a corporation with the person who is the main owner and some subsidiary owners and probably somewhere in there they appoint a CEO, but he's got some vice presidents and vice vice presidents and senior managers and lower level managers and then the workforce looks like a pyramid. It's a hierarchy. Where would you rather work? In this environment, where you are almost totally controlled, if you want to stay there, where hardly any feedback goes upward, you know? People up here have the attitude, if we wanted your opinion, we'd give it to you. Or if you, you know, if we wanted to know your opinion, we'd give it to you. People in this environment have really only one motivation. You know what it is? Self-preservation. Avoiding punishment, which comes down to preservation. Yes. Would you rather work in this environment or this one? Where these seven other people besides you are people, you know them, you have lots of reasons to trust them, you feel comfortable with them, you're engaged in a mutually chosen vocation, something you like to do, something you believe is important to do, and you get to be creative and do it. Where would you rather work? Well, there are millions and millions of people in this environment who would prefer this environment. Let's attract them. That's how we're going to win. We're going to attract people from that environment into this environment. We've got to create this environment, and everyone's going to want to join. Everyone, except the psychopaths that have to be in charge, let them go be in charge of each other. Am I making sense? So this whole macro strategy, if you will, hinges on the notion that this is a better environment to live in than that. For just about everyone. And yeah, if your inner motivation is so screwed up that you have to be telling everyone else what to do, and you're not happy unless you are in that position, then you're not going to want to be here. And if you come and try to take over one of these groups with that kind of attitude, they'll kick you out. 
if seven people in the group decide that this one is ruining the group, they kick him out. But it takes a unanimous decision of all the others to oust one. That's the rule of the game. So what you're going to find is that this kind of organization, especially when you have multiple octologues working together through an ethical contract, you're going to find that it has a tendency to cleanse itself of the undesirables. And in fact, usually, this guy, if he's a control freak, he's just going to be uncomfortable and leave. He's not going to stick around because he can't boss other people around. Everyone's equal in an octolog. All the octologues are equal in the holomath. It's really very simple. The trick is just getting enough people to get that clearer vision of it. It's been clear in my head for a long time, but I gotta tell you, I'm getting better at articulating it and sharing it with people, but when I started out, I couldn't get anybody interested. I had to come up with how to picture it, how to talk about it, and so on. Well, we're getting that down now. First workshop is on organizing these octologues and putting them together in holomats. The second one, the mentorship workshop, that's about how do you stand in front of a group and teach this stuff? I want to teach the teachers, who in turn will teach more teachers and so forth. Once we get that going, this will be unstoppable. Can you see that? That there's a threshold. We need to, first of all, we need to fill this room with folks. I need you and you and you and Thomas and everybody else associated. And there are several other people. I need to start bringing more guests. Bring people you know, whether you think they fit in or not. Hey, some new ideas you need exposed to, be exposed to it. Come with me. Fill the seats in this room. And we will then, probably before this room is full, we'll be putting on the first workshop, three-day workshop. That's where we start teaching people the real nuts and bolts of how this all works together. We'll spend the whole morning, if not longer, on just the ethics alone. Because it's the ethics that drives this. It's the ethics that makes this work. Even if we didn't have the amplification process, if we had enough people committed to the ethics, this process would work. The amplification is gravy. It's nice. It helps. But the key is the ethics. And most people don't have a clue. When I was up to the age of about 32, 33, I thought ethics was a trivial subject. Trivial. I had no idea that it was the most important subject I would ever learn which I do believe now. Any questions on any of them? Questions? Okay. So, if you don't already have one, get out something to write on. A piece of paper, something. As a matter of fact, here's what I want you to do. I want you to write Numbers one, two, three, four, and five. And I want you to write next to each the names of five people. I mean, one person each. Make, write down five names of people you know, whether or not you think they would fit in here in this group. If, they, if you think they would fit in, so much the better. But I don't want you to screen people wholesale because you don't know what your best friend is going to think of this. He may be skeptical as hell when you talk to him about stuff that's interesting and that interests you. Doesn't mean he's going to be skeptical here. Okay? 
usually when there are a bunch of strangers in the room, Thomas introduces me, gives me this rousing introduction. He edifies me. So when I walk up here and pick up this thing and start to talk, people are more prepared to listen than they are their uncle, their cousin, their brother, their best friend, and so on. Thomas gets it. He's been at this with me for almost seven years. He's committed. Okay? And he understands edification. He's someone you can trust. You've just met him recently, but he really is someone you can trust. He's a guy who does what he says he's going to do. So write down five names. And then draw a line. And do five more. You get to write your own file. I must say, you don't know any five people at this point because I don't get out of the house much. So yeah, you'd have to broadcast these on the yeah. on <laughs> UStream or something. How Which about, maybe we could work that how out. How about actually. back home? In Pittsburgh? Yeah. It's kind of hard to bring them here. I didn't say. <laughs> hey, guess what? You get a group started. I'll go there. <laughs> you think I'm joking? I'll go anywhere in the world to get these groups going if they just pay my way. You understand how committed I am. I will travel to put on these meetings anywhere and everywhere. Yeah, you need to have a group, a core, a core group of people that, there that are interested, but I'm up for doing that. But that's the first step, is that we fill this room with guests. And you don't send them, you bring them. Okay? Even if that means picking them up and physically bringing them up. That's the way it's done. We get the people on hand, they see what's happening, they see more people than there are now, and they say, wow, something's happening. You know, some people make things happen. Some people watch other people make things happen. Some people talk about what's happening, whether they're watching or not. And some people don't know that anything happened. Every morning you have a chance to choose which of those applies to you. Choose what I said. I'm done for tonight. Any questions? I've covered the ground that I intended covering, and you've done some. No questions? Okay. Not articulating at the moment. Okay, well, I guess I did my job. I'm going to clean up the board and be done.